Panama Canal. On July 6th, we were lucky enough to experience the Panama Canal. We went through rafted up as two boats, Dragonfly and Arabella. We are two families that have been sailing together for the last few months. Today we have put together a presentation by Arabella, Luca, Alex, Naomi and myself. In this presentation we will teach you a bit about history, some facts, the geography and our experience. I hope you enjoy. Preparation for the Panama Canal. First you must clear in, then decide if you want to hire an agent or to do the work alone. Submit information such as boat and crew papers, all to the canal authorities. Book your transit, then acknowledge who you're going to be rafted up with. Arrange an inspector to come and measure your boat. Then pay boat fees depending on the length of your boat. And then you must secure the date that you cross the Can Panama Canal and arrange line handlers to come aboard your boat on the day of the transit. Wildlife. Panama is a country located in Central America between Costa Rica in the north and Colombia in the south. It forms a narrow piece of land between the Caribbean and the Pacific Ocean. This is called an isthmus. The climate is tropical and the environment is home to an abundance of exotic plants and animals. About 60% of the country is covered in rainforest. The canal cuts through several national parks through lowland jungle and mountains. Panama. It's a country of extraordinary biodiversity. The artificial lakes formed by the locks is surrounded by wild rainforest and is home to numerous crocodiles. Many species of exotic birds, frogs, turtles, sloths, monkeys, anteaters, wild cats, and many more animals. Apparently, it is common to see crocodiles when transiting through the canal. While we were so close to the jungle, we did not get to see any of these creatures besides tiny flying bugs, dragonflies, pelicans, and other seabirds. What is the Panama Canal? The Panama Canal is a constructed waterway which connects the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans through the Isthmus of Panama. It is 40 miles long from shoreline to shoreline. Ships can cross in either direction and it would take about 10 hours for them to cross without interruption. The canal is important because it is at the crossroads between two oceans and the two American continents. It is at the heart of some of the busiest maritime trade routes in the world. It also enables ships to avoid the hazardous route around Cape Horn at the southern tip of South America, or the even less popular northern route through the Bering Strait in the Arctic. Currently, the maximum boat dimensions to, to transit through the canal is 369 meters in length, 51 meters in width, and 12.2 meters in draft. How the canal was built. The Panama Canal was made by building dams on the Chagres River to create artificial lakes over the land. The Big Gatun Lake and the smaller Mariflores Lake. The Galliard Cut is a passage dug out through the steep mountains between two lakes. A large channel has also been dug out into the Pacific. The inland lakes are at a higher altitude above that of the oceans on each side. To solve this issue, engineers designed a system of locks. There is one set of three locks on each extremity of the lakes. These locks lift boats by a total of 26 metres up to the elevation of the lakes and then lower them back into the ocean level. History on May 4, 1904, a Frenchman named Ferdinand de Lesseps decided that he wanted to build a canal so that everyone could sail from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. He had just finished the Seuss Canal in Egypt. That was another world-changing site. So he thought that he could do the same thing with Panama. But little did he know that Panama was very different from Egypt. <laughs> when he arrived in Panama, he sent his workers to start digging into the work. Suddenly, a man named Adolphe Gordon de Lepine came in to tell him that everything he was doing was not going to work. Ferdinand was confused. 
Adolfi told him that Panama was a jungle with high mountains and diseased mosquitoes. He said that Ferdinand would never be able to bring the mountains down to sea level. He thought for a minute and excitedly said, How about you bring the sea to the mountain level? Ferdinand was like, um, bring the sea up? That sounds like a stupid kid's idea. So he left to go back to friends. So all the workers dug through the mountains. 50 people died every day, and that was not even the worst part. They would work all day and night, and the landslide would take their lives out and work away. After seven years of working, 20,000 people died. Ferdinand comes and realizes what is happening. He thought back to seven years ago when Adolfi told him, Make a water elevator! Ferdinand was like, um, okay, now's a good idea. Uh, change of plans, you go collect wood. What do you think you're doing? No breaks. But it was too late. The advisor was like, uh, no, stop. We have lost way too many workers. Please, one more chance, he would have pleaded. No, no, and no. So Ferdinand was sent back to France, banished from Colombia. One investor named Philippe, he was so interested in the project that he was like, oh no, I'm not going to give it this time. If you guys aren't going to do it, I'll do it myself. The universe was like, um, you're crazy. We're not going to waste all that money. So he was left alone. So Philippe got to work. He didn't have any people to help, but he was determined. After a bunch of research, he learned that the Americans current and their current president, Teddy Roosevelt, was also planning on making a canal. Philippe decided to use this to his advantage. Since the Americans were also planning on building a canal, Philippe researched around the area where the Americans were going to build a canal. After Philippe researched the place, he overcame a perfect discovery that would fit into his excuse to bring the Americans and their president, Teddy Roosevelt, nearer to their plan. Philippe rushed to America and explained that where they were building the canal would not just fail, but many workers would die. Teddy asked Philippe, well, then, what is such a threat to our canal, I must ask? Well, there are many volcanoes around the area, and you're planning to build your canal in. And one explode pretty recently. Your idea simply won't work. It is truly intelligent to build a canal in the nature like, I must say, way smarter than French. The president agreed to build the canal with Philippe, but I must ask. Do you have Colombia's permission? Leave that to me, Philippe answered. Lucky for Philippe, Panama was already fighting for independence. So all he had to do was make Panama come on his side. Once he set foot in Panama, he made a speech to the Panamanians. I have heard that you all want to be independent. Well, listen up. If you make me your gun governor, then I can make you independent. America will help you. They want the canal built as much as I do. What's in it for America, the Panamanians yelled. Well, they will be able to roam around Panama as if it's their own country. So, the deal was sealed. War began. America sent their army to help Panama. Colombia still fought against the armies. Finally, Colombia gave up. Fine, take the land. The Americans and Philippe built the canal in Panama. America chrome around the country like it was their own. The canal was built. Everything was merry. They won, but lost at the same time. They won. Oppressing the canal. My dad, he's putting a camera up the mask so we can record us going through the Panama Canal. And now it's time to go to a whole new... Hello to you all. Today, this evening, we'll be going to the Panama Canal. I believe we are departing right now. Okay, coming up. As you can see, the dragonfly has departed. Pulling up the airport right now. As you can tell. Up. We have an advisor on board and we also have 
line hand. Yeah, so here we are, about to go through the first locks of the Panama Canal. Uh, got a dragonfly behind us and uh, we're going to be going in with that grey boat, uh, the Juliana, and uh, we're going to be in the same lock as him. Yeah, they're in front of us in the same lock uh, and we're just going to slow down now and uh, let uh, dragonfly come and uh, nest up next to us and then it's all go, go, go. We have come to a flat space where we can raft onto Dragonfly and soon we'll be going to the first lock. Really Line handlers are catching monkey's fists that the staff are throwing to them. The cushioning on our hatches prevent the hatches windows from breaking. Now the advisor is explaining how we should enter the locks. Okay. So the gates yeah. I can see is the yeah. past the how close do I get to that one? Looks like I get very close. Day two of crossing the Panama Canal. Right now, Arabella is going up the mast to re-put camera to the top so we can record going through the second mast. The teen lake was built for 1907 to 1913. The Gatun Lake was the largest man-made lake in the world. The Gatun Lake is about 26 meters above sea levels. Next up is the Mira Flores Locks. We are in it right now, and it is the last locks before we get to the Pacific Ocean. The last set of locks that we went to, Pedro Miguel's lowered us 9 meters, while here lowers us 16 and a half meters. Here the big boat is being dragged by little carts. And there we are, the gates for the last ones are open.
On July 6, we went through the Panama Canal with our good friends Arabella. We went through the first three locks together, rafted up, up to Gatun Lake where we spent the night. The next day, Arabella left to go through the last three locks and out the Panama Canal, leaving us dragonfly stuck in the lake to have the most boring day ever. The following morning, at around 8 o'clock, we also left to go through the last three locks. After three hours of motoring, we finally made it to the first lock. Once the monkey fist had been thrown, I got into position as line handler and got ready to let in and let out the blue ropes as the locks were emptying. After we made it down the first lock, we went and waited at the second lock for the big ship behind us to catch up, where we had a lunch break and were hit by a bit of a rainstorm. Once the rainstorm had gone through, we went through the last lock and out the canal. Finally, we were in the Pacific. This was such a fun experience and we are so happy that we got to share it with Arabella. Panama Canal is a one-time experience and we are so lucky to have and we are so grateful for it. We crossed on the 6th of July, rafted up to Dragonfly in the early evening just as the sun was setting. The locks closed and we were behind a massive boat. We watched the water fill up and people scurried around like bees. Eventually, we got high enough to see the Atlantic Ocean and we towered over it. Then we went through the next lock and the next until we were far from sea level. Dragonfly and us unrafted in the Gatun Lake and re-rafted once we were attached to the big red boy. In the morning, unfortunately, Dragonfly couldn't go across the Pacific with us because there weren't enough advisors to bring two boats. We went across alone and all the way across the Gatun Lake it was important. Once we reached the last three locks, the sun came up and shined down on us. The water emptied and we finally reached the Pacific side. Thank you Panama Canal for making our trip from the Atlantic to the Pacific so much easier. My experience going through the Panama Canal. I really enjoyed it and it was really fun. I was mostly on Arabella boat when we were doing it and my friend Arabella who lives on that boat um, we went on the trampolines and we were doing gymnastics in the rain and I really enjoyed myself. And when we had finally arrived in the Pacific, I was so happy because it just feels closer to home. And after the next few days, it was amazing because there was so much more wildlife. We caught fish and you could see whales basically every day you went out to sea and dolphins and we even swam with whale sharks, which was the most amazing experience I've ever had living on a boat. My experience through the Panama Canal, well, it was exciting at first, but it was started to get a bit boring. It was quite cool though how the locks filled up and they filled up quite fast considering how huge they were. Going in the, in the locks, we were behind a big ship and then going out of the locks, we were in front of one. Yeah, and once we went through the Panama Canal, there was a lot more fish and whales. There's like a lot of whales. And then before we went through the Panama Canal, I'd only seen like three whales. And then here, there's whales pretty much every day. You see them all the time. And we got to swim with whale sharks. Didn't really want to swim with the whales though, the other whales, because didn't want them to kill me. Still quite nice here. Haven't really been such tropical waters yet, but we'll get there soon and we're going to go to the Galapagos soon as well. There's going to be like lots of sharks and stuff. Don't really know much about it though. I felt scared, excited and impressed when I first arrived in the Panama Canal. I was really scared but 
I didn't, couldn't think of anything that would hurt me. So I decided to leave that emotion. I was really excited about everything. When we first crossed under the bridge, it was like, it was like, soon enough I'm gonna be in the Pacific Ocean. Like, I'm right now in the Atlantic and now I'm gonna be in the Pacific. And it was so cool. Uh, so, when we arrived at the first lock, I did not know what would happen. So, they just, I was told to go under the covers, under the bit of mini, cause they were gonna throw massive, like, monkey ball things, monkey fists. It was basically like this rope that was had a metal thing, and they would throw it onto the boat. So, and we had to tie it onto a blue line, and we covered up our hatches with something so it wouldn't break the glass. And it was really scary, so that was one thing on my list that got me really scared. Then on the second lock in the first pair of locks, there, I, my dad told us that we would not want to fall inside the water. Because it was a mix of seawater and fresh water. And if those two mixed together, it just like, if you even just fall in, you'll immediately drown. So if a dog jump, if a dog fell in, nobody would jump in to save him. But if it was a human being, of course they would try. They'd either throw a rope down or maybe like hang people down, like, I don't know. But they would try to save a human, but not a dog or a pet like that, because nobody would jump in. And there was another thing on my thing that I was scared. But once I got into the lake, I felt more calm and relaxed and less scared because even though there's crocodiles there, it, I feel okay. So it didn't really matter that there was crocodiles to me. I even jumped on the buoy. So, yeah. That is how I felt. Thank you so much for listening.